Okay, so let's actually look at a very general quadratic equation and use the completing the square method to actually come up with a formula that will always solve quadratic equations. And we'll call it the quadratic formula. So I'm going to write down a generic quadratic equation. It would look like this. It would have an a out in front, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Where I want you to understand that the variable is x. A, B, and C are some numbers, but, and in practice they may be 4 and 2 and nine, minus 7 or something. But right now, I'm going to put in just letters to represent those values so we can see a formula that will always work no matter what A, B, or C we plug in. So please remember, this is the variable and I want to solve for that, and these are just some unknown constants that we'll plug in later. Okay, so now how do you complete the square? First thing you do is get rid of that coefficient. So if I divide both sides by the A, It cancels here, and I'm left with x squared. Now, these things are going to get a little messy, by the way. b over a times x plus c over a equals 0, because 0 divided by a is 0. Now, it's going to get a little bit ugly looking, but don't let that bother you. We're only going to do this once in our lives, so it's worth doing once. What's the next step? Take the constant. Now, that might not look like a constant to you, but remember, these are supposed to be numbers. It's the x's that we don't know. Take that constant, bring it to the other side. x squared plus b over a times x, big space, equals, and then I have a minus c over a. What's the next step in completing the square? What I do is take a look at the coefficient in front of the x, which in this case is a b over a, and I take half of it. So I take half of b over a. That equals b over 2a. And then I square that. So if I square that, I'll see b squared divided by, and if I square the bottom, I would see 4a squared. I squared the 2 and I squared the a. That's the value that I'm going to want to add to both sides of this to complete the square. So I'm going to now add plus b squared over 4a squared to both sides. Adding it to both sides means I'm not changing the the equalness of this. Everything balances out perfectly. Just completing the square. Took half of this and squared it. The only difference is that now, instead of having like a 7 in here, I have a b over a, and so it looks a little bit more threatening. But don't let it threaten you. All we're doing is the exact same idea. This should factor perfectly into a perfect square. x plus b over 2a squared. We can check that by multiplying this by itself. If you FOIL, you'll see x times x. There's that. The inside term is b over 2a x and another b over 2a x. So that's just going to be b over a x. And this times the last term is going to be b squared over 4a squared. So in fact, this really is a perfect square. On this side, what does this give me? Well, I want to get a common denominator here and combine. So I have an a here, but I need a 4a squared. So I'll multiply top and bottom here by 4a. So here I'll see a minus uh, 4ac on top. And on the bottom, I'll have a 4a squared. But don't forget that term, plus b squared over 4a squared. So I can actually now uh, combine all these things together. Let me write everything out here. I would have x plus b over 2a, all squared, equals, and if I combine this, what would it look like? It would look like, well, I've got, just combine the top, I'll write the b first. So it's b squared minus 4ac. So I'd see b, uh, b squared minus 4ac, all divided by the common factor of 4a squared. So that's where I am. And now what do I do? I take plus or minus square roots of both sides. That's how you complete the square. So if I do that, let's see if you can see that little teeny bit. What I would see is the following. I'd see x plus b over 2a equals, and I'm going to take the square root of the top, plus or minus, square root of the top, b squared minus 4ac, and then the square root of the bottom. I only have to take square, uh, plus or minus of, of one of them, so I'm just putting the plus or minus in front of everybody. And that's where I am. Okay. 
And now what do I do? Well, now what I do is I realize that uh, the bottom actually can be written out. I can take the square root of that. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of a squared is just, is just a. So in fact, what I see here is x plus b over 2a equals plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac and all over just 2a. That's the square root of this. I want x all by itself, so I'm going to bring this term over by subtracting. And when I subtract that term, what do I see? Well, if I subtract that term, let me lift this up so you can just still see that last equation. That's all that matters right now. What I would see is x equals, well, I'm going to bring this over. It becomes a negative. So negative b all over 2a plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. But look, a 2a on the bottom is a common thing. I can just now combine the tops. So if I combine the tops, what do I see? I see x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. That's the top. And on the bottom, I see 2a. And so what's the big finish? The big finish is that when I see something like ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, if we complete the square, we see that x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. And this will always work no matter what a, b, or c is. We could just plug them in and we'll get the two solutions x equals this thing with a plus, x equals this thing with the minus there. And in fact, this is called the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula because it allows us to solve any quadratic equation. And, and so even though it may sort of look intimidating and, and so forth, you can see the genesis of it. You can see where it came from. It just came from taking a general form of this and just completing the square. That's all. Next up, we'll take a look at a lot of examples using the quadratic formula. You're not really responsible for being able to derive it like I just did, but at least it gives you a sense of where it came from, and I hope that you'll be able to memorize this formula because it's extremely powerful and extremely useful. Okay. <laughs>